Today's reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 19 to 22 and 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 6 to 16. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it's written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we've received is, is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and can't understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Thank you so much, Kirsty, for that reading, that amazing reading. Well done. Well, good morning. We're continuing this series called Family Values. And it's lovely to see you this morning. Especially welcome you if you are visiting us at St. Saviour's. It's lovely to see you. Please stay behind the service, have some tea, coffee, so we can get to know you a bit better. My name is Alan. I'm a member of the team here. And we've been doing this series called Family Values, the, the values that underpin what we believe here at St. Saviour's. And we should have the first slide on the screen. I don't know if you'll be able to read all them from where you are. Um, so these are what we've looked at so far, unity, transformation, authenticity. We're going to look at over the next few weeks um, your character, learning to celebrate our brokenness, how we can grow for grace, and what it means to be a spiritual culture. But this morning, we're here to think about how we can listen to God. And I don't know who you're listening to or where you get your advice from or how you make your decisions when you look back through your life and some of the big decisions you've made. And you think about it. How did you make those choices? How did you make those decisions? Because all of us are listening. We're all listening to someone or something. We all make our decisions based on something. And that's what we're going to think about this morning. So before we continue, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you long to hear from us, that you long to speak to us. We pray this morning that you would be speaking to our hearts by your spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Soon after I first became a Christian, I belonged to a life group. And I always remember one particular session in the life group in the church I belonged to where it was a very heated debate about Moses. Um, there was one particular person in our group who had certain opinions upon Moses and um, he was having an argument with some of the other people. I was just kind of taking a step back. I was a fairly new Christian, just observing what was going on. But I noticed everyone rustling through their Bibles, trying to work out where this guy was getting his opinions from, where his views were coming from. And then someone actually had the boldest to ask him, well, where in the Bible did you read that? And he said, oh, it wasn't in the Bible. I saw it in the Prince of Egypt, the Disney cartoon. I wouldn't think Disney's probably the, it's great, but it's not the best place to get your theology from or you get your idea of who God is and who the characters are in the Bible. Maybe Disney's not the best place to go to. 
But who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Maybe you're a heart person, and when you feel something very strongly or negatively, that's how you make your choices. Maybe you're quite an emotional person. If you're sort of passionate about something, if you're happy or joyful about something, that's the choice you're going to make. Or if you're sad about something, then the door closes. Maybe you're an academic or an intellectual person. You like to rationalize things. Does this make sense? Is it safe? Is it proper? Is it profitable? That's how you make your choices. Maybe it's others. Maybe you just value the wisdom of others. Maybe it's in conversations you have. You have a conversation with someone and you think, yep, yeah, that's the decision I'm going to make. Or maybe you, you, you hear a bit of gossip or conversations going on and you think, yeah, that sounds a really good idea. I'm going to make my decisions based on what others say. Maybe you love reading, reading articles, reading newspapers, hearing the news, reading magazines, and you make your choices based on your research. You know, it scares me the amount of people who make major life decisions based on Facebook or Wikipedia, which has some good stuff, but obviously there's no checks and balances. Anyone can say I'm a doctor and say, you know, you shouldn't be eating um, yellow cheese, eat blue cheese, you shouldn't be eating fresh milk, you know, people put all crazy things on Facebook. It amazes me the amount of people that think, okay, I've read it on social media, I'm going to make a life decision based on that. There's nothing wrong with some of those things. But how are you making space to listen to God? How are you listening to God? Listening to God is normal for anyone who follows Jesus. It's normal for anyone who says they, they belong to Jesus, to be guided by Jesus and to hear Jesus' voice. One of the key values for us here at St. Saviour's is we want to be a community that hears God's voice, that is guided by God and does the things that God calls us to do. And our readings this morning are taken from two letters written by St. Paul's to two different churches, one in a place called Corinth, one in a place called Thessalonica. And it was, if I was to summarize our two readings in just a few words or a couple of sentences, it would be this. God's wisdom is revealed by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll never grasp God's wisdom. And the way we know it's God is we have to test it. God's wisdom is revealed by the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit, you'll never grasp God's wisdom. But we have to test it. That um, first reading that Kirsty read, do not quench the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Testing is important. So we know it's God. It's not just our imagination or our agendas or our emotions. We know that actually it's God speaking. So this morning I wanted to remind you of five tools. We've covered these before, these five guides that can help us know whether it's God that's speaking to us. Help us get into that place where we hear God and know that it's God. Each of us have these tools that we can hear God more clearly, to know his wisdom and to test whether it's from God. So the first slide on the screen. And the first one is G. The first of our guide is G. Go to the Lord. Psalm 37 says this, commit your way to the Lord. The first thing we should do is go to the Lord in prayer. Before you do anything, pray. Pray is this wonderful tool which we have, which is a two-way thing of us communicating with God. Not just us speaking to God, but hearing God, but actually offering everything that's going on in our lives, our decisions, our, our problems, our challenges. We can offer them to God in prayer. And if you're like me, so often, we often pray after we've made a decision. God, will you bless that thing I've done? Would you bless that choice I've made? But actually, this should be the starting point. Before we do anything, we go to the Lord in prayer. Go to the Lord. Then you, the second one, understand God's principles. Lovely verse in Timothy, 2 Timothy. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The primary way that God speaks to you and me is through this book, the Bible. It's the prime way he speaks. It contains everything we need for righteousness. It has a whole load of wisdom about parenting and relationships and money and our, sort of our sexual lives and our relationship lives and everything we need to do, handling conflict. It's all in this book. It also reveals to us about Jesus and about God's love for us. And God's plans for our lives. This is the primary way God speaks to us. And if you're not reading this regularly, then don't expect to hear from God. If you want to hear from God, you need to pick up this book and spend time reading it. Understand God's principles. 
And then the I, thirdly, the I is for investigate. Believe it or not, we have a, a walk of faith, but God wants us to use our minds as well. It's okay to rationalize. It's okay to think things. It's okay to investigate. Does this fit with me? Does it fit with my gifts, my passions? Is this something which I would want to do? Is this something that God would want me to do? Use your brains. It's okay for us to investigate and use our common sense. And then D, discuss with other wise Christians. Discuss with other wise Christians. Proverbs 15, an amazing verse. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Sometimes we get such wisdom and clarity when we share it with other people who are maybe as not as connected as we are to the problem. Sometimes we can be so close. We need someone who's objective, someone to come in and walk alongside us and say, well, what do you think about this issue? Someone we trust, someone who's wise, someone who's prayerful, someone who can speak into our lives. I know so many of us here, we've made major decisions based on those wise people who've encouraged us and spoken into our lives. Discuss with other wise Christians. And then E, exercise your free will. Isaiah 30, 21 says this. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Sometimes we go through a list and we're so clear what God is saying. Hey, it was still waiting for, I don't know, an earthquake or lightning or angels to show up. And actually God wants us to exercise our own free will. As we step out, that's when we often hear God's voice behind us. That's where faith comes in. Sometimes we can be so paralyzed that we don't move. And God wants us to get up, to step out. Step out into the deep and move. Exercise your own free will. Free will is such a wonderful, precious gift that God gives to each one of us. Over the years, I've made some good choices, some, some bad choices. And I, but I, as a sort of a manager, as, as a manager for many years, I've employed some people, and I thought, well, how did it work out? Did I get it wrong? And I always come back to Judas. Remember Judas. Did Jesus get it wrong, making Judas one of his disciples? What we see there is free will. Of course, Jesus didn't get it wrong. But each of us are given free will to make good choices and bad choices as we go through life. And there's a point where we have to exercise our own free will based on the information we're given. Exercise your own free will. And then lastly, S, and I have three S's. The first is the Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit into your situation. Invite the Spirit of God. That wonderful passage that Kirsty read to us from Corinthians says this. This is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but words taught by the Spirit explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God. He thinks they're foolishness. He can't understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. And sometimes as we invite the Holy Spirit, we'll get a sense of peace about a situation. Or we'll get a sense of sort of unrest that that situation is not right. That's the spirit speaking to us. And as we learn to walk with God, we learn to recognize those promptings. But there's so many things of God that you can't just get with your mind. We need to allow the Spirit to unwrap them and unravel them and speak to our hearts deep within ourselves. So the first S is the Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit into the situation. The second S is signs. Throughout the Bible, God speaks again and again in signs, sometimes to get your attention, sometimes to lovingly and amazingly confirm what God has already spoken over you. I remember the first, I think it was my second visit to St. Saviour's, my first time on public transport. A number of years ago, someone had spoken to me um, a word over my life saying, God is calling you to a haven. The word you need to remember is haven. And then when I was praying about it, I was reading a psalm, and it was the psalm that said, God will lead you to your desired haven. I think that word only appears in the Bible once. So I thought, wow, that's a confirmation. And then the second time I came to the Saviors, I came by public transport. I was coming out of Sombre Cross um, Subway, and I was trying to get my bearings, and I was looking for a road, and I saw this road, and the road said, Haven. Sometimes God just confirms and confirms and affirms the things that he's calling you to. Signs. Where are those signs or those coincidences, which actually God instances, which God keeps bringing up again and again in your life? You know, sometimes you're, you're a bit dense like me. He has to speak to you about three or four times before you get the message. But actually, when you reflect and look back, you think, oh, well, God, you were speaking to me so clearly about a path you were leading me down. Or so clearly you were closing a door. 
of a path I shouldn't have gone down. Science. Lastly, the last S, and probably the most important S, is surrender. Get in the habit of surrendering your plans to God. You remember that scene in the Garden of Gethsemane just before Jesus was preparing to go to the cross? That he was praying that God would deliver him, that he didn't want to go through this pain and this anguish. But he said, not my will, but yours be done. And sometimes that's the most painful prayer we can pray. Lord, this is what I want, this is what I desire, this is what I hope. But actually, I'm going to surrender that to you. Not my will, but yours be done in this situation. God, hum- God seems to speak to us so clearly when we humble ourselves. If you've got a DAB radio at home and you're trying to tune it into the frequency of your favorite channel, if you wanted to tune it into God's voice, I think his frequency would be surrender. That's how we hear God's voice clearly, when we surrender. So why is this so important for us as a community that we are a community that listens to God and is guided by God? It's in the place of hearing God we often just see destinies change, lives change, lives transformed. It's when we listen to God, we see where the Holy Spirit is working and we can get in step with what the Spirit is doing. I was listening quite recently to a, an interview by Jackie Pullinger. I'm sure many of you have heard of Jackie Pullinger or read her book, Chasing the Dragon. If you haven't read that book, I couldn't recommend it more. It's an amazing book of God's power and it's so inspirational and very challenging. And Jackie was this young woman from Croydon who jumped on a boat and she had nothing but 10 pounds in one hand and the prayer in her other hand. And her prayer was that God would speak to her when she needed to get off the boat. And in 1966, the boat pulled into Hong Kong Harbour and God said, this is where I want you to get off. She got off that boat and over the years, you know, history has been made. Thousands have been delivered from drugs, have been released from gangs, released from prostitution. Thousands have come to faith in Jesus because of her being willing to surrender and listen to God's voice. And she said this in the interview, she said this, this this line which I found so challenging. She said, don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. We have a God who loves us and longs to speak to us and has plans and purposes for our lives. Don't waste your life. What Jackie did in Hong Kong is amazing. But wouldn't you like that to happen in Sunbury? Wouldn't you like to see people delivered from drugs and gangs and stuff that they're struggling with? Thousands coming to know Jesus. Wouldn't you like to hear where God is working, where he's calling you and me to do? A few years ago, my um, director of mission came to speak in the church where I was leading. And he came with his wife, and we had a time of prayer at the end of the service. And I was quite surprised to see his wife come down and, and ask for prayer. And he'd been speaking about this subject, about how we can hear God's voice. And as I was praying for her, a kind of little word came into my mind, and I had a little phrase. And I shared this verse of scripture, and I felt, it feels to me that God is um, saying that he's calling you into something new. And I gave her the verse. But I said, obviously, you need to go away and test that. And I could see sort of tears sort of down her eyes. And she said, she went to her church in the morning. And she went out. And someone prayed for her and gave her exactly the same verse of Scripture and the same word. And it had been something that she'd been praying into and being challenged by for many months. And those were the beginnings of the stepping stones that caused her to step into a new area of ministry, which totally transformed her life and changed the lives of others. And I always remember that because just like me, just like her, all of us are children of God. And God longs to speak to each one of us. And when he speaks to things, it's not just words that encourage us. It's often words that change destinies, that unlock something in our lives. And as God works through us, we see others change. Maybe even history made. That we see that, that wonderful community that Jackie has in Hong Kong, where thousands are coming to know her. So my question again to you this morning is, who are you listening to? How are you making space and time for God to speak to you? How are you being guided by God? 
What are the things that God is speaking over your life? Do you take time each season, each month, each year to say, Lord, what happened yesterday or last year was amazing, but what do you have for me this year? What do you have for my family? What do you have for my church? Maybe God has been speaking to you for a few things. Maybe for you this morning, it's actually having that courage to step out in that new path. How are you listening to God? If you're able, would you like to stand? And if the band would like to come up. I wonder what God might be saying to each one of us this morning. I wonder how much we appreciate that he is a loving God who longs to speak to his children, longs to impart new things, longs to guide us down his paths, his plans, his good plans. He's just waiting for a family, a community, and individuals who are willing to say, Lord, I'm open to what you want to say to me. So we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit, and it always amazes me that the word listen is the same letters that make up the word silent. And it's all about just being silent and having space and saying, Lord, I do a lot of talking, but I want to just tune into your voice and hear you in my heart and my mind. So Holy Spirit, we want to invite you here this morning. We just say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And just in the quiet of your hearts, We receive the Spirit just by faith, just by saying, thank you, Lord. The things of God are spiritual things. They can only be received by the Spirit. By faith. And we just say, Lord, we receive you. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you've experienced something powerful. Maybe you've experienced nothing at all. But God's promise is that when we ask, he comes and we receive him just by faith, just by saying thank you. Come, Holy Spirit. And while we just wait on the Lord, maybe there's one or two people here and you know that God has been speaking to you about a specific area, a choice, a decision, a relationship, a job, it could be anything. And you'll know what it is and... maybe for you is to go through that list praying, going to the Lord understanding his principles what does the Bible say about it investigate does it make sense maybe you need to discuss it with someone you trust who will pray for you and share with you maybe God's calling you to step out in faith to exercise your free will Maybe he's calling you to reflect on those signs, those God instances which he's shown you. Maybe God's just calling you to surrender. Let's come, Holy Spirit. Or maybe you're here this morning and you're at a crossroads and you don't know which way to turn. You might be confused or sometimes I get a sense that we're scared. We're scared to make the wrong choice. Commit your way to the Lord and he will do this. It will make your righteousness shine like the noonday sun. Commit your way to the Lord. God's wisdom and guidance isn't a crossword. It's not a maze. He wants you to make the right choice. He's for you. He goes ahead of you. And he longs to reveal his heart to you. 
We just have to ask, Lord, what are you calling me to do in this situation? If that's you, just ask the Lord, Lord, what are you calling me to do? Come, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that you are a good God who longs to speak to us and guide us. And You're not an angry Father who tells us off when we get it wrong, but you just love us, and even when we make the wrong turns, you, your, your grace is so amazing and bigger than our mistakes. You just want us to try and do things in your, your will and for your glory. And I pray this morning, Lord, that the choices that we have to make, that you would be with us, that you would guide us. You'd help us to know your love when we've got it wrong. That you'd lead us, Lord, to get it right. Thank you, Jesus.